Hi. Sorry, uh, I'm Yuiko Mori from NEC. Uh, today, I would like to talk about Kubernetes. Uh, the title is Kubernetes LTS Working Group. Why we need LTS? Here is today's agenda. Uh, first, I will introduce myself and our job and our customer also. And then I will talk about container and Kubernetes. And I will also talk about characteristics of Kubernetes. And then I will introduce some problems when uh, we upgrade Kubernetes. And I will introduce Kubernetes LTS working group also. And finally, I will talk about what we will do from now on. Uh, first, uh, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Yuiko Mori. I'm a software engineer. I'm uh, working for NEC open source community team. Uh, I've joined in Kubernetes community in 2019 and mainly contributing for SIG storage and SIG testing. And also, uh, I talk about our mission. Our company is providing Kubernetes to our customers. And my mission is uh, adding some features or fixing bugs for our customers. Yes, for customers. Uh, I said our from convenience, but to be precious, I myself don't, uh, don't do bad. Uh, other team members' job, actually, but uh, their job is building systems and providing them to our customer, not for ourselves, uh, not for our company. Who uses Kubernetes is our customer, not we. Our customers are, for example, finance, telecommunications, uh, ministries, and so on. Uh, they provide many services which Japanese consumers use. Uh, in these industries, high service level agreement is required, you know. In such a situation, I will talk about the reason why our customers select containers or Kubernetes. Before talking about it, uh, let's go over what is container, what is Kubernetes. A container is a standard unit of software that packages up code and all its dependencies so the application runs quickly and reliably from uh, one computing environment to another. Kubernetes is a portable, extensive, open source platform for managing containerized workloads and service that facilitates both uh, declarative configuration and automation. And then uh, I will talk about why Kubernetes is selected by our customers. There are mainly two reasons. One is speed up. Our customers want to speed up the development cycle and shorten the time to market, especially for end users' uh, smartphone app applications. The other is that uh, recently many products are distributed as container more and more. There are products that can only run on Kubernetes rather than containers. That's why Kubernetes is selected. As I said, uh, nowadays Kubernetes is popular and used in many industries. But still Kubernetes has many problems. For example, lack of features, quality, uh, availability, uh, opera, uh, operability, uh, maintainability, and so on. Uh, today's session, I will pick up the problem about version up. At first, I will talk about why Kubernetes version up is so hard. Current Kubernetes support life cycle is 14 months. 
and it has been improved from nine months, but it is not long enough still. Why? Because uh, release cadence is three times per year. And then the maximum version skew supported uh, between control plane and the node version is minus three. It means that a lifetime for one version is just one year. So we must upgrade Kubernetes once a year. It's a little bit frequent for us. And also I will introduce uh, other reasons why upgrading is so hard. At first, uh, upgrading takes long time because we must verify whether the latest Kubernetes run properly uh, before upgrading. Uh, it takes about one month, and so, uh, and also we need to verify whether application run properly on the Kubernetes after upgrading. Sometimes ap applications don't run because of API incompatibility due to upgrading. This issue happens uh, because Kubernetes API is often removed. When comparing to Linux, in case of Linux, kernel API changes uh, don't occur frequently. Another point of view is actual lifetime is short. What I mean is, for example, uh, 1.30.0 uh, was released in April, but we don't use U, uh, version 1.30.0 because dot zero includes um, some bugs almost always so that we need to wait for next release, like 1.3.1 or 1.3.2. Usually it takes one or two months uh, that next patch version will be released. Uh, after releasing 1.3.1, we need to verify whether it ran properly before upgrading. It takes about one month this means that uh, we can use specific versions of Kubernetes just for nine months. And also I will introduce what our customers think about Kubernetes. Uh, it's just in case of uh, our customer, but uh, they don't want to use latest Kubernetes features, but they want to use stable Kubernetes for a long time. It means that they don't want to use unsupported Kubernetes. I'd like to clarify what we want to do and what we don't want to do. What we want to do is developing applications, develop fast and fast and fast, and bring the applications to the market fast. We want feedback from users fast and improve applications. We will do it again and again and again fast. We want to run the development cycle fast. The important point is that we want to release our applications fast. We don't hope Kubernetes release fast. Uh, speaking of Kubernetes, we want to use stable Kubernetes. Next, uh, uh, what we don't want to do is to maintain Kubernetes. We don't spend many human resource or cost to maintain Kubernetes, but we want to spend them to develop applications. I think uh, such problems occur in many companies also. 
Maybe there are similar problems. LTS working group was launched to solve the, uh, these problems. LTS working group is a working group to promote Kubernetes LTS. LTS means long-term support. GitHub URL is here, so you can access to it. LTS working group has re restarted after discussions at the contributor summit in April 2023. Then uh, I'd like to talk about the reason why LTS working group has restarted. This is a result of a survey by Datadoc in October 2022. The survey result revealed that most hosts run Kubernetes versions that are more than 18 months old. This survey was done in October 2022 and written as here. Most used Kubernetes version at that time was version 1.21. Version 1.21 was released in April 2021 and the end of life was January in 2022. It means that they run unsupported Kubernetes. Based on this situation, LTS working group has been restarted in order to organize and solve problems of Kubernetes version up. Actually, LTS working group was started in 2018 and dissolved in 2020. In 2018, release lifetime of Kubernetes was nine months, but there were many people who think it was too short. So LTS working group was established. As a result of a discussion in the working group, release lifetime was extended to one year. As a result, the goal of working, uh, LTS working group was achieved and the LTS working group was dissolved in 2020. Furthermore, expect for extending of a uh, release lifetime, some improvements, uh, for example, changing the release cycle from four times per year to three times per year was done, but uh, barriers about upgrading are still existing now. Then LTS working group was started in 2023 again. And from now, uh, I will introduce two activities of LTS working group. One is a survey. This survey about Kubernetes upgrade has been held on last December. Now, this survey has been already closed, but I will introduce some result of this survey. First question is about respondent attributes. What type of clusters do you run? Most people use just managed service. of cloud provider, uh, maybe AWS or GKE, AKS, and so on. And also many people use just bare metal or on-premise managed cluster. There are two questions about upgrading Kubernetes patch release version. Patch release version means, uh, for example, from, uh, from version 1.28.0 to version 1.28.1. .1. First question is, how often do you upgrade Kubernetes patch release versions? Uh, 
As you can see, there are many people who answered as needed or reactive. Maybe this as needed or reactive means that uh, bug fix they need or for vulnerability, I think. And also quite a few people answered never. Second question is how often would you ideally upgrade Kubernetes patch release versions? People who answered every month or every patch release has raised from 10% to 30%. And people who answered never <laughs> decreased to zero. Next, uh, I will introduce the result about minor versions upgrade. Minor version means, for example, from version 1.26 to version 1.27 or 28. First question is, how often do you currently upgrade Kubernetes versions? Second question is, how often would you ideally upgrade Kubernetes versions? As you can see, comparing two results, every minor release or three times a year increased from uh, 17 to 33 percent. Mm, and twice a year decreased from 23 percent to 30 percent, so 30 percent. At the end of life or end of support increased from 17% to 25%. I guess that people who answered as needed or reactive seems moved to at the end of life or end of support. And also I guess that this means that they want to deal with serious issue like vulnerability. As you can see, about ideally, many people answered every new minor or three, three times a year, and at the end of life, end of support. So divided between two extremes. People who want to upgrade frequently and not frequently. Next question is, why are your cluster upgraded? The most answer is security updates. The second most answer is due to life cycle and support windows. As you can see, quite a lot users don't want a new feature. But users who want to use new feature also exist. They are not few. Next question is, how long would an LTS release need to be supported in order to accommodate your normal upgrade cycle? As you can see, many people answered one year or two years. There are also many people who answered three years and five years. And also, it's not related to LTS working group, but we had a CNCJ meetup last Friday. In this meetup, we discussed about Kubernetes upgrading. Here's some of them. First question is, why are your cluster upgraded? As you can see, many people wrote plus one to due to end of support. But some people voted to new features also. The second question is, how long do you want Kubernetes to be supported? And as you can see, many people voted to five years. Three years is also popular.
Next, I will introduce another activity of LTS Working Group. It is the proposal to increase release lifetime with regards to CBEs. Now, LTS Working Group is discussing increasing uh, discussing to increase release lifetime with regard to CVEs in Google Docs. Here it is. And the working group is thinking about proposed to change the ex existing support lifetime of Kubernetes release like uh, from zero to 14 months full of support. It is same as today. And from 15 to 24 months, CVE backports only. And after 25th month, uh, end of life, CVE backports to be considered for 15 to 24 months time frame must in, include a matching Kubernetes slash Kubernetes issue with the offshore CVE feed label and the CVE ID assigned to them by community security response, or before dependency of Kubernetes slash, Kubernetes slash, but only if the uh, CVE directly impacts Kubernetes slash Kubernetes. Or go version updates to keep all branches in sync. To make it easier to understand, let me explain with a diagram. Above the diagram is current release lifetime. Support life cycle is 14 months, and skew is n minus three. And below the diagram is proposed release lifetime. LTS working group is thinking about extending it to 24 months. So Q is the same as today, n minus three. And also, uh, I will pick up some discussion in LTS working group now. Uh, first is uh, about release lifetime. 14 months is enough or not enough, why? Uh, second is how much will the cost increase to project to ex ecosystem, CI dollars, people hours, and so on. Third is about artifact. Should these security only releases be Git tags only? In other words, no binary release or binary release is necessary? Fourth is about CVE backport. For example, uh, should we fix all CVEs? Should we prioritize CVEs? As for future plans, we will discuss in KubeCon and uh, Cloud Native Con 2024 next month. Uh, in GitHub, call for uncurrent topics has been posted. So if you are interested in, it's good to vote it. Uh, finally, I will talk about what we will do from now on. We will reflect on needs from our customers, uh, customers' perspective in Kubernetes. For example, uh, reduce, uh, reducing release cadence is our customers' wish. Sometimes community don't know or don't understand what users want. I think uh, I think that it is impossible to understand what users want or what users think perfectly, even if taking a survey. In order to understand each other, we need to talk and know users deeply. So we need to behave as a spokesperson of companies. As a result, uh, we will fill the gap between users and uh, the community. Uh, this is all for my presentation. Thank you for listening.
Any question? Apologies for operating only one mic microphone side and with uh, request and uh, uh, presenter. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I have a, uh, I, I understand uh, the need of LTS and uh, I have a question. Uh, if a uh, Kubernetes community support uh, no LTS, uh, it costs uh, a lot of cost. So uh, uh, I think Kubernetes community now is not supported for LTS. So how, how to deal with this issue of cost? Uh, thank you for your question. Your question is, uh, in order to address LTS in Kubernetes, in, it costs, right? Yeah. So that how to deal with it? It's very difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, in my consideration, uh, for example, I am from NEC, so that uh, many companies uh, except for NEC, needs LTS also. Hitachi, right? <laughs> 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 or some company also think about same things, I think. So that um, I think important thing is pay uh, or uh, pay some money for Kubernetes communities. It's my, <laughs> just my <laughs> own consideration. Is it, is this uh, answer for you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not a question, but I'm just answering in another perspective about the question previously. Um, so I'm one, of, I'm one of the contributors for Kubernetes and um, not necessarily those like large enterprise companies. Um, there are some companies that fork their own Kubernetes inside instead of using just adopting the open source community version. So I think if LTS actually happens as a working group actively, I think that kind of helps their internal activities too because they fork all the versions of Kubernetes and um, they fork with their own features. And they tend to keep using the older versions. So I think it's a good to discuss with more like open-minded, varied communities to ask for more needs. Then I think more people will get involved. Then more full-time employees will work on those kind of long-term support distributions. So I think it is very important to speak up for your own use cases and why and also concerns. So I think in, in terms of that, your question was really good because that was also a concern. Yeah. Any other question? So I will finish our presentation. Thank you for attending. <laughs>